The man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. What's up Game of Thrones fans and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over the Season 8 Episode 2 script that is leaked online. Again, like I said in my previous video, I'm not familiar with the website that I found the script on, so I cannot confirm its authenticity. It may be the real script, it may not, I'm not sure. And for everyone that commented on my last video that the scripts were not even done yet, you are wrong. Nikolai Coster-Waldu, the actor that plays Jamie Lannister, said in an interview on August 16th with Collider that they are going to begin filming Season 8 in October, which means the scripts are definitely finished. So with all that being said, let's get into it. The first scene will take place in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Jon, Daenerys, Tyrion, Davos, and Sansa are present here. Gendry and Tormund tell the rest that the Wall has fallen and the Night Watch destroyed. Tormund also mentions that the Night King rides an undead dragon. Bran confirms Gendry and Tormund's story and tells them that the Night King is on his way to Winterfell. Jon Snow tells the rest that they have no time to lose and asks Master Walken to inform the Banners, everyone in the North, to prepare themselves for a war against the Army of the Dead. They need to prepare for an attack at the battlefield of Winterfell. After having to process a lot of new information and struggling with his identity, Jon Snow goes to the crypts to visit his mother, Lyanna, and his uncle Ned Stark. Daenerys notices that there's something wrong with Jon and finds him in the crypts. She asks Jon what's wrong with him. Jon tells her that his name is not Jon Snow. He calls Jon Snow a lie people have made him believe all of his life. Daenerys is confused and asks Jon for clarification, but Jon walks away from her. Daenerys walks out of the crypts, which Jorah Mormont notices. He asks her what happened down in the crypts. Daenerys answers that she doesn't know what's wrong with Jon. She tells Jorah that Jon is hiding something from her. Jorah also tells Daenerys that he has noticed she has been acting absent for days. She answers that she has not been feeling well. Jorah proposes to have her examined by Maester Walken. Kyburn enters Cersei's chambers. He mentions that she hasn't spoken about her miscarriage anymore, and that she needs to take enough time to rest. Cersei answers that there's no time for that and doesn't want to talk about the miscarriage. Kyburn leaves her chambers. Cersei watches from the window as snow falls in King's Landing. The next shot is Jaime, riding his horse in snowy conditions. He and Bronn arrive in River Run. Both discover that the Tullys are once again laying siege to River Run. Jaime enters the stage and meets up with Edmure. Edmure tells Jaime he should have him in chains, but Jaime responds that he didn't come to argue about the castle. He proposes to Edmure to help his niece and nephew in the great war against the Night King. He also promises to give River Run back to the Tullys, since it doesn't matter any longer who's holding the castle at this point. Edmure tends to agree, not for Jaime, but for his family. Most of House Stark's bannermen and Daenerys' army have now arrived at Winterfell. Among them is Howland Reed. He arrived with his army and Mira Reed by his side. Arya received a visitor in Winterfell. He seems to be an ordinary bannerman from House Sirwin, but he removes his face revealing Jack and Hagar. Arya is surprised to have Jack in visiting her. Jacken tells Arya that the many-faced god requires another death, a name to be crossed off her list. He reveals it to be the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, Cersei Lannister. A price was paid. What better servant of the many-faced god than Arya Stark to kill Cersei Lannister? He gives a vial of poison to Arya and leaves her. Jon Snow seizes the moment to talk with Howland Reed alone. He asks Howland to confirm Bran's story, but Howland doesn't acknowledge this at all. Jon Snow pleads to him to tell the truth since Robert Baratheon isn't alive any longer that there's no point in lying anymore. Howland ultimately confirms that Ned was carrying Lyanna's child when he came out of the Tower of Joy. He also promised to keep this a secret. Jon thanks him for telling the truth. Knowing that the army of the undead will be upon them very soon, Tyrion, Jon, Sansa, Arya, Brienne, Podrick, Davos, Tormund, Gendry, Varys, Jorah, Theon, the Hound, Grey Worm, and Sam discuss together with the Stark bannermen how they would defend the North. The last hearth has already been attacked by the White Walkers and their castle destroyed. Ned Umber didn't make it out alive. Tyrion speaks for Daenerys, who is absent due to illness. He comes forward with a plan to defend the North. Tormund, the remaining free folk, the Dothraki, and the Unsullied will attack with Dragonglass from the Dreadfort, since that's where they are heading first. On their way to Winterfell, the dragons will set the army of the dead afire, and House Stark's bannermen and the Knights of the Vale will fight weakened forces at the battlefield of Winterfell. Jon tells Brienne and Podrick to take Sansa and Arya and Bran with them, and leave with Rob and Aaron to the Eyrie. Arya doesn't want to go and claims she is stronger than most men. Jon insists that he doesn't want that. Jorah also wants to fight alongside House Mormont, but Lyanna reminds him that he has betrayed his own house. 
Varys mentions that he had also received word from King's Landing that Queen Cersei has bought a great army of cell swords, and Euron Greyjoy has taken Storm's End to install their army there. Theon pleads to have Storm End attacked, and Gendry agrees since it's the seat of his father's house. Jon promises Theon that he will help him destroy Euron and save his sister after they have dealt with the Night King and his army. Jon tells Theon that he needs his and the Iron Islanders' help during the battle for Winterfell. A disappointed Theon accepts this proposal. Masande visits Daenerys in her chambers. Daenerys tells Masande that Master Walken examined her and that he confirmed that she is pregnant. Masande asks why she doesn't look happy then. Daenerys says that Jon has changed toward her and she doesn't understand why. The Free Folk, the Dothraki, and the Unsullied prepare to leave Winterfell. Jon asks Daenerys why she didn't attend this important gathering, but Daenerys doesn't reply. Mira goes to say goodbye to Bran and the gods would in Winterfell, when Bran starts to behave very strangely. He tells Mira to warn the others that the Night King army is here. Jon is going to say goodbye to Sansa when Mira runs in to warn the others. A huge winter storm comes closer to Winterfell and chaos erupts. The Northerners and Daenerys' army gather outside to face the Night King's army. Jon orders Sansa, Arya, and Daenerys to stay inside Winterfell. Jon promises them that Winterfell will now fall. Varys, Tyrion, Robin, Samwell, Gilly, Lyanna, and Missandei also remain inside Winterfell. Santa asks Mira to get Bran inside. A huge flock of whites invade the battlefield of Winterfell. The Dothraki face the army of the dead first, and many of them are taken out quite easily. Lots of whites keep coming. Ghost fights with Jon and is killed trying to save him. Inside Winterfell, Daenerys is frustrated that she is not able to help and says that she should be flying Drogon to help destroy the undead. Masande tells her that it is not wise to join the fight while she is pregnant. Sam tries to console Gilly and Little Sam. Sansa, Tyrion, and Varys get news that Drogon has taken a big chunk out of the Night King's army, but he has also killed some of the northern bannermen in the process. The scene cuts to the White Walkers on the battlefield, with the Night King flying undead Viserion above them. Viserion starts to destroy the northerners' army as well. Lord Glover is killed by Dragonfire. Tormund leads the Free Folk in the fight, but is killed by fire. Mira warns Bran to leave the Godswood, but he tells her he has to help Jon. Bran is trying to control Rhaegal with his mind. Mira warns Bran that it is too dangerous and that he should stay inside. Jon and Daenerys' army is diminishing greatly. White Walkers try to invade Winterfell. Grey Worm faces two White Walkers and is able to take out one of them with a spear made of dragonglass. The other White Walker kills him. Brienne guards the castle together with Podrick, Jorah, and Gendry. Podrick is killed by a group of Whites. Brienne kills one White Walker, as well with Oathkeeper. Mira is urging Bran to give up and go inside, but Bran refuses and tells Mira to go inside. Mira answers that she will stay with him until the end. Jaime Lannister and the Tully forces come to the North's aid. Bran is warging into Rhaegal, and the dragon starts fighting undead Viserion. Whites make it into the godswood, and Mira is killed while defending Bran's body. Viserion and Rhaegal keep fighting and both get seriously injured. It seems like Dragonfire can harm the Night King. The Whites stab Bran to death, which makes Rhaegal fall to the ground and to be stabbed to death by the Whites. The Night King Arby is starting to diminish. We see Jaime commanding his men and fighting the remaining undead alongside Bran. Jon fights alongside the Hound in Davos. When Jon starts to notice that the Night King's army is retreating, he commands everybody to leave the battlefield and get everyone inside. The Knights of the Vale, Sansa, Brienne, and Robin leave together to the Eyrie. Arya, the Hound, Jaime Lannister, Bronn, Edmure, and the Lannister army return to River Run. The last shot we see is Jon and Daenerys on Drogon's back 